Hello dear friends, good morning, such a beautiful, beautiful morning. And here I am in my backyard to do some reading to improve myself. And uh, I want to let you see the beautiful scene in front of me. Look at it. The plum is getting good. A lot of plums behind me and the scene in front of me. Look at it. Oh. This part is so <laughs> beautiful. Okay, <laughs> hello dear friends, good morning, such a beautiful, beautiful morning and uh, it's really beautiful. Later I will do a video, now I will not touch the microphone and everything I have just uh, set up. So this is a book I borrowed from the library, Pegasus and uh, I have checked the uh, dictionary how to pronounce it but I decide maybe I will just read according to the phonetic, uh, uh, normal phonetic uh, way of reading it. As told and told by, told by Mariana uh, Meyer, illustrated by K.Y. Kraft. This is so beautiful, Pegasus. Fei Ma in Chinese is a flying horse, Fei Ma. <coughs> there was a time long ago when a magnificent wind horse, Pegasus, soared as effortlessly over mountains and clouds as he galloped across meadows. A wild, solitary steed, Pegasus, welcomed no man's company until the young hero, Bela, Belarophon, oh, Belarophon, Belarophon, sought his help. Commanded by a jealous king, condemned, oh my goodness, condemned by a jealous king, Belarophon must win the trust of the elusive Pegasus or face certain death, as have so many before him on the bone scattered cliff, cliffs where the blood thirst chimera, chimera makes his liar, makes its liar. Only the bonds of brotherhood, bravery, and horsemanship can save men and mystic horse as they battle this legendary demon beast. Mariana Meyer brings us brings this enduring Greek tale to the picture book audience with vivid emotion and unique vision and truly extraordinarily paintings by Kinoko Y. Craft capture each moment in both sweeping majesty and exquisite detail. Together, author and artist guide young adventure, adventurers and horse lovers to a place where imagination so Pegasus. <coughs> there was a time long ago when the wind horse Pegasus roamed the heavenly land of How, 
Halcyon, Halcyon, the heavenly land of Halcyon, as well as the earth below. No ordinary horse. Okay, I put it a little bit down so you can see. Oh, this is the shape of it. You want to see it. How about I move around? No ordinary horse, Pegasus soared over mountains and galloped through clouds as effortlessly as he trotted, trotted, trot, trot, trotted across green meadows. Indeed, he was as free as the rushing wind that lifted his spreading wings. The ancient gods of Greek, the ancient gods of Greece loved him, calling Pegasus the poet's wind steed, the steed of inspiration. His hoof once stuck the sweet grass of Halcyon, and from that spot water flew, water flowed, bestowing the power of creativity upon all who drank its water. From that hours, the three muses, sisters of the arts, tended that sacred spring and the ancient forest surrounding it, a wild, solitary steed. Pegasus looked for no man's company until the young hero, Bellerophon, went, went in search of him. This is their story. Pegasus and the shade of it and this is uh, by pastel and uh, I think this is a pa pastel painting or maybe um, maybe acrylic this is acrylic painting or oil painting oh look at orange tree and the flowers. These are the flowers we have, the lily uh, nymphia, and these are the three god, three goddess of arts, the uh, three muses of arts. Bellarophon. Excuse me for the background noise. I try as much as as I can to avoid. Well, look at this style of painting. Once upon a time, there was a hero, hero there was a hero youth named Bellerophon, son of the king of Corinth, of Corinth, Corinth who had many enviable qualities. His bravery as a warrior was hailed throughout Greece. He was fair in his dealings and was handsome as any god. He was as handsome as any god, Bellarophon. Wow. Such fame brought him enemies as well as friends. One foe plotted against the innocent youth, succeeding in turning Bellerophon's 
succeeding in turning Bellerophon's good friend, King Pro Protus, against him. King Protus, Pro Proetus, 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 Pro Proetus. Proetus, King, King Proetus against him, foolishly believing that the young hero had fallen in love with his wife, Proetus planted, planned revenge. He sent the unsuspecting Bellerophon to the king of Lycia with a sealed letter. With, uh, he sent the unsuspecting Bellerophon to the king of Lycia with a sealed letter. Now the king of Lycia, 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 Lycia. Now the king of Lycia. Now the king of Lycia, <coughs> Lycia, Lycia. I would like to pronounce it Lycia. Now the king of Lycia followed an ancient custom of, of hospitality. He never asked the reason for a guest's visit until 10 days of feasting had passed. So when Bellerophon arrived, he was welcomed by the king and his family without question. As the days went by, the youth and the king's youngest daughter, Philonoe, 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 were never, were never far apart. Love grew quickly and Bellerophon was at the point of asking for the princess hand in marriage when on the tenth day the king at last requested the reason the young man had come to Lycia. Only then did Bellerophon represent presented his lost, his host with the letter. So Bellerophon went to uh, Lycia, meet the king of Lycia, Poetus, and he fell in love, kind of fell in love with a beautiful daughter, uh, Phil Philo Philo Philomena, Philo 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 Philonoe, Philonoe, and uh, at the tenth day. The king asked the letter, why you come here? And he presented this letter. <coughs> the king look, took the letter and promptly broke the seal. Silently he read, he read with horror these few simple words, put to death the bearer of this message. Now the king had grown very fond of Bellerophon, but he could not refuse King Proteus. If he did, he risked making the powerful Proteus his own enemy. Yet he was unwilling to bring about to bring about the youth's death by his own hand. Instead, he devised a dreadful task for the unsuspecting Bellerophon, a task the king knew would send him to certain death. The young princess was shocked. 
and Bellerophon was unsuspecting. He did not think about any of this. And the king loved him but had to follow the order. The next day, the next day, the king summoned Bellerophon and said, I believe the God have sent you to me, for my kingdom is in need of a hero. Ask what you will, Majesty. I am at your service, replied Bellerophon. Well said, noble youth. Your valor does your credit. Your valor does you credit. Your valor. Answered the king, the monster, the monster known as Chimera terrorizes the people of Lycia. Chimera. Already it has ravaged great properties, great portions of our land. The creature breathes, breathes fire from a lion's mouth and tears its victims with dragon claw. Every warrior who has gone to destroy it has perished. Will you be our champion and do battle with the monster? So every hero who has fight with the monster was devoured and uh, and uh, destroyed by the claw of the dragon and this. and the monster has destroyed the life We should look at it very, very closely. Oh, there is some. So the scared people has to run away, and the hero fighting. The mutung, and there are people scared. There are people. And this is a fight, fight flight and freeze and this is a flight run away and this is a freeze and this is a fight our human instinct when meeting with uh, challenges dangers risks though Bellarophon knew that he was being asked to go to his to his doom he could hardly refuse the king without being considered a coward he does not want to be a coward but before setting out to challenge the monster he asked advice from he asked the advice of a well-known soothsayer okay hello dear friends let's continue because family is doing something so I change my seat and uh, the lighting might be a little bit different. I hope uh, you can see it. I will do as much as possible to make it uh, more viewable. 
and uh, the reflection I really cannot do anything anyway <coughs> you will fail like others if you meet the beast upon the ground declared the wise man your only chance will be to convince the wind horse Pegasus to fly you to the chimeras, to the chimeras lair, and, and there do battle in the air. For upon the leg of this wind horse, you might use your weapon to pierce the monster's heart. The chimera can be killed no other way. But be warned, Pegasus is wild and unlikely to follow anyone. The wise man told him, you can only use one power, that is Pegasus. You ride the horse and fight in the sky and you use your sword to pierce through the heart of uh, Chimera. Bellerophon journeyed, journeyed to, a, to a place where the wise man had suggested he might catch a glimpse of the wind steed but expect no help from those who live nearby, the wise man had said. The villagers guard their privacy and do not like strangers. So, you may ask anyone, but nobody will help you. This, this reminds me of going to Turkey, Italy, and uh, I have never been to Greece. Oh, wow, look at it. <coughs> Many days and nights passed. As he wandered, Bellerophon asked time after time for news of Pegasus. But the answer was always the same, Pegasus. There is no such animal. The villagers laughed at him. Go back from where it is where it is you've come. You will find no flying horse here. Yet Bellerophon lingered and finally he drifted off into the forest alone. There, as perhaps the gods men intended, he stumbled upon the legendary fountain of Pirene. Pirene, Piren, Piren, the fountain of Pihen. So he wandered, wandered, and wandered into the fountain of Piran. <coughs> Upon a stone slab beside the fountain, Bellerophon read, Come, weary travelers, drink and be refreshed. For once a woman, Pirani by name, wept here for her only child, her son, who had been slain. Long did Pirani weep until she was transformed into an endless stream of flowing water. So Pirani, this is Pirani. And she has wept here because her son has been killed, slain. Maybe I read like this.
this way the reflection can be reduced a little bit. <coughs> Pitying the poor mother, the gods have since blessed this spot and all those who drink from these crystal waters. Beneath a canopy of oak and horsehorn, animals of every kind came to drink without fear. Little wonder then that when Pegasus chose to, chose, chose to walk upon common ground, he favored his enchanted place. As Bellerophon approached, a pheasant flew from the marble rim of the fountain into a thicket. There was the sweet call of the gold flinch, and then silence. He, learned, he leaned down, cupped his hand to catch the sweet water, and drank. That night, with little idea of how to catch the elusive Pegasus, he decided to sleep nearby, out among the stars, the moon, his only light. So he slept under the stars and the moon, his only light. Well, that sound is just perfect. <coughs> As he slept, he dreamed that a luminous woman appeared holding a bridle, holding a bridle so fine and pale that it was nearly invisible. Noble youth, don't despair, said the woman. Present Pegasus with this gift, and he will not fail to win his, and you will not fail to win his love. If you learn its name, it will blind you both forever. If you learn its name, he did not know the name, <coughs> only a present. Blessed Goddess, I can barely see what you hold and do not know its name, said the youth. Its name is trust, replied the woman. I give it to you to share with your brother, Pegasus. It will lie lightly between you, and none but the two of you will know it is there. Remember, you must be as equal. You must be as equal if you are to succeed. Now the bridle rested weightlessly in Bellerophon's hand. Then, as he gazed at it, the object melted into the air like a snowflake caught in his grasp. Looking up, 
Bellerophon hoped to question his be benefactor, to question his benefactor further, but she too has disappeared. The youth awoke to see that it was not yet dawn. The memory of his dream lingered while the distant village slept and a fog lay on the forest. He heard a sound. Bellerophon turned. There was a horse walking. All alone, upon the fallen leaves, by the fountain, like a ghost that walks in moonlight. The horse was watching him. Suddenly, he felt akin to this lone animal who waited now, motionless, for his approach. The goddess disappeared. Oh no, this is a fountain, must be. So Bellerophon here, and there came a lone animal, the horse. Bellerophon drew near until they were a foot apart. Holding his breath, he tentatively reached out a hand. The horse raised his forefoot off the ground and hurled himself upward. Suddenly, a pair of magnificent wings spread from his bored shoulders. Now the steed was in the air, rising higher and higher until he was far above the thunder stuck use. Pegasus circled the young man, Pegasus circled the young man and then disappeared, obscured by a bank of clouds. But in a flash, he reappeared, landing, wings folded, hardly winged, in front of Bellerophon. Pegasus pressed his velvet nose against the youth's shoulder, pushing him towards his flank, indicating that if the youth wished, he might ride. The young man obeyed, and all at once they were climbing through the clouds, holding tight to the horse flowing mane, to the horse flowing mane, Bellerophon heard only the roar of the wind, of the wind, and the, and the steady pondering of his own heart. They streaked across the sky, wildly dipping and waving, weaving. Pegasus flow over jagged cliffs and followed a river that twisted and wound along like a shimmery silver snake. The patient steed took time with the new ride, though they were both till now solitary Pegasus master master of the cloud, the other a hero of the earth. Together they learned the skill needed 
before challenging the chimera, the two of them together. So Pegasus suddenly stretched out its wings. So the two learned how to how to fly, how to coordinate, and they are on top of the sky. This is the Silver Snake River. <coughs> at last, at last, one evening, the youth gathered up his sword, spear, and shield, and went to Pegasus, the stallion. The stallion knew at once what was expected. He pounded the earth with his whole hooves. Snorting, he arched his neck and reared, eager for the youth, for the young man to climb upon his back so that they might be off. Cloaked in darkness, the two fly up into the sky in search of the deadly monster. Sword and uh, spear and shield. <coughs> the chimera, the chimera was the fiercest, fiercest of beasts with a goat's body joined to the head of a fire breathing line. Wow, goat's body and a fire breathing line. Yet the monster had the line, had the iron tough scale, oh, tail and claws of a dragon. Its lyre was in a black cave. Its lyre was in a black cave on the side of a sheer cliff that plunged down to the sea. Descending only when hungry, the monster devoured people, devoured people and animals at random and burn the countryside with its fierce breeze. It was nearly midnight when Pegasus brought the youth alongside the mouth of the cave. Oh, this is the cave, the mouth of the cave. Suspended in mid-air, at first they waited, see only the charred bones of cattle and defeated warriors scattered above about the entrance. A whisper of smoke curled upward from the opening and a choking stance filled the air. Causing figure, causing Pegasus to snort. The bones, the charred bones, charred bones of animals and warriors. Suddenly, they heard a rowing a row from inside the cave. And the chimera sprang out. Fire burst from his from its mouth and smoke engulfed both horse and rider. Turning, the chimera whipped its dragon tail at Pegasus. The wind standing leaped nimbly 
nimply to one side, allowing Bellerophon to swing his sword in a flash, in a flashing arc, severing the tip of the monster's tail. The chimera gave a blood-chilling roar. Never before had an opponent stuck such a blow. Once more, flames were flung at Bellerophon and Pegasus. Raising its shield, the hero defe deflected the flame and, ca and a cascade of sparks shot in all directions, singeing, singeing Pegasus' mane and silver-tipped wings. Oh, oh. In the air, horse and rider were once motion. Was were once were one motion. No, now swiftly rising, now swooping downwards to escape each attack, anticipating each other one, each other's every move. The youth sword stuck out at the monster time after time, but Chimera's powerful claw were too quick, and the sick dragon scale scales a supreme defense against the warrior's attack. Bellerophon's arm grew numb as his heavy weapon clung and railed in combat with the monster. Not for a moment could, be, could the youth let down his guard. He had to hold his shield high and keep his sword nimble if he was to ward off the monster. And then the chimera broke through his defense. Klaus tore at the hero's arm. With lightning speed, Pegasus so soured out, out of harm's way saving Bellerophon from certain death. It kind of gold, lion, dragon. The battle raged on at daybreak, and at daybreak, Bellerophon had not found a way to drive his sword into the monster's chest. Now he saw that he must make use of his spear if he was ever to succeed. Yet, blinded by smoke and weakened from loss of blood, He continued to need both sword and shield to fend off the flames and deadly clouds of the beast. Bellerophon knew his strength was waning and time was running out, of, running out for him. He must risk giving up his sword before all his power was spent, letting down his defense but for a moment, 
he flung his sword away and took hold of his spear. Skillfully, he aimed and thrust with all his remaining might. Streaking through the air, the spear cut through smoke and fire and found its mark, piercing the monster to its very heart. The monster's horrible roaring ceased, and the flame subsided. Now there was only silence as the lifeless body of the chimera dropped from the rocky precip precipice, following thousands of feet to the raging sea below. It was swallowed by the waves and disappeared forever. The cliff fell down. Oh, oh the light is... Uh, triumphant horse and rider return to the fountain of Pirene. And in this sacred spot, where a woman had once shed tear of loss, the hero turned to leave his beloved Pegasus. He knew he could not hold the stallion against his will, but, but as the earth bound Bellerophon watched Pegasus alabaster's, alabaster's wings catch the wind, catch the wind, lifting him towards the heaven. He hoped that this would not be the last he would see his friend. As the news that the Chimera had been slain, there was great rejoice. The king dared not attempt to harm the hero again, for he was now convinced that the gods favored Bellerophon. Instead, he gladly, gladly gave his consent to the marriage of his daughter and Bellerophon. The two were wed with much celebration and given a portion of the king of the kingdom to rule together. And though Bellerophon's duty were great and his marriage a source of happiness, as the years passed, he found time enough to steal away from worldly things to seek his friend Picasso whenever possible. As the goddess in his dream, as the goddess in his dream had foretold, the two had become brothers, bound, bonded by a trust that never could ever forgot never could ever forget Pegasus and Bellerophon. They stay together through trust. The end.